Then it came to kindergarten time and I thought, oh, well, maybe I should send her to school. And I actually went to the kindergarten, public school kindergarten uh, meeting and had a moment where I thought, no, never mind. I got the sick feeling in my stomach and I just like ran out of there and thought, no way, nobody's gonna take my baby. <laughs> Hey everyone, this is Yvette Hampton. Welcome back to the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. I am so excited that you are with me this week because I have one of my absolute favorite people on the planet here Aww. in the studio with me, my BFTR. You guys are probably wondering what a BFTR is. Well, let me tell you, it's bestie for the resty. <laughs> this is my best <laughs> friend, Crystal Coleman. And you guys have probably heard me mention her name before. She's the math nerd. She's the math geek that I talk about, but you're so much more than just a math nerd. Thanks. I know. <laughs> I mean, if it were just math, we probably wouldn't be such good friends because I hate math and everybody knows I hate math, but you're so much more than that. We'll, we'll talk about those things this week on the podcast, but she is here in Oklahoma from California visiting our family this week, and we are having such a good time. And this is really funny because we got requests from you, our audience, saying we want to hear from just a regular homeschool mom. So when I knew she was coming, I didn't tell her until she got here, but I was like, I think I'm going to ask Crystal if she wants to be on the podcast with me because she's a regular homeschool mom. I guess what, what people would consider a regular homeschool mom, but I am also just a regular homeschool mom <laughs> who just happens to talk about homeschooling on a podcast. But if you'll notice, I always have guests with me because half the time I am trying to still figure out what it is that I'm doing. So I'm just a regular homeschool mom as well, but Crystal hasn't written... 50 books on homeschooling. Nope. She doesn't have a homeschooling podcast. She is a normal, regular homeschool mama. Bonafide, regular lady. Right. Yep. Right. <laughs> and so she is going to talk with us this week and you're going to get to hear from what you've asked for, a regular homeschool mama. So Crystal, I am so, I am so excited that you're sitting here in my studio with me. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Yvette Hampton. <laughs> That's so funny to say your last name too. It's so fun to be here with you. Yeah, thank my you. And you listen forever. to the podcast. I do. I love it. There's, Which is fun. It yeah. took you a long time to start listening though. Why I is know. that? I'm putting you on the spot. <laughs> I'm because kidding. I'm busy. Just, I'm sorry. And I'm I didn't totally have kidding. a system down for it. And then once I figured out I could walk my dog and listen to the podcast, oh, then yeah. I started listening every day. <laughs> I'm totally messing with you. It's been years that she's been listening, but it was funny. I remember a few years ago when you yeah, were like, it took me a I while. I finally started listening to your podcast. <laughs> but here's the thing. You and I talk often. And so like, you know, all the things that I think about and talk about and stuff. So yeah. it wasn't like all new information. I got like the preview and the post view of your right. shows. And then when I talked to you, I'm like, oh yeah, I heard about that yeah. twice now. <laughs> right, right. Exactly. Anyway, it's going to be a fun week. But before we get into our conversation, I want to say thank you to our sponsor, BJU Press Homeschool. If you're looking for a great Christian homeschool curriculum for your kids, no matter what grade they are, no matter what age they are, no matter what subject you're looking for, check them out at bjupresshomeschool.com. And they have online courses. You can just do the textbooks if you want. You can do the videos so that they can teach your kids for you. It could be parent-led. Whatever is best for your family, they have something for you. So check them out, bjupresshomeschool.com. Also, thank you to those who continue to support the Schoolhouse Rocked Ministry. We are so very grateful for you. Um, I've told you before, we cannot do what we do without your encouragement, support, prayers, all the things that you guys help contribute to the ministry. Uh, we are so thankful for you. So please continue to support us. And there's a few ways that you can do that. One, of course, financially, you can always support us through the website by clicking on the donate button, but also you can support us by sharing the podcast with your friends and family members, those people who are just regular homeschool mamas like Crystal and myself <laughs> who just need encouragement. Um, share this podcast with them, uh, whether it's video or the audio um, that is really, really helpful for us. And then also, if you would leave a review for the podcast on whatever platform you listen to, that is helpful as well. So so thank you for doing those things. Uh, we are grateful for you, our listeners. And we really do listen. We want to be able to provide you with the content that you want, which is, again, why Crystal is here this week. And so we're going to talk about homeschooling and just some fun things. Um, when we first started homeschooling, it, we're now, of course, as our listeners know, at, at you know nearing the end of our oldest daughter's senior year yeah. and our kids, our oldest daughters are five months apart, mm -hmm. almost to the day. Mm -hmm. And our two younger kids, we, we both only have two kids. Our two younger kids are five weeks apart. Yeah. And so it was so fun. We got to be pregnant at the same time, both times. And um, so we've really like, we've raised our kids together and um, it's it's been really fun. So I remember when we started talking about homeschooling, actually, you and I talked about homeschooling long before 
You didn't Either want to girls, homeschool. No, long before the, the <laughs> girls were born. Against it. <laughs> I was adamantly against homeschooling. And you were one of the people who started encouraging me in mm-hmm. the way of homeschooling, probably before the girls were even born, um, before your daughter and my daughter were born. Um, was I? Did I then? Yeah, I, I think so. Well, Maybe. well, I don't let's think talk I about that because you were a public school teacher yeah. at the time. Yeah, I don't think I even knew I was going to homeschool no? until... Well, until I guess I was pregnant. Yeah, maybe so. Yeah. Well, talk about that. Talk about that transition for you because you went from being a public school teacher. And maybe talk about your experience with that. You were a public school teacher in LA yeah, County. For five years. Yeah. yeah I was a pre-algebra junior She was high a math geek. Math teacher. <laughs> I loved it. I loved being that teacher that would say the kid's name every day when he wa- they walked in the classroom. I'd shake their hand because I thought, that poor child, like, what if that's the only handshake they get? Uh, and I loved getting to be that, like, light into their life. And, um, but then when I got to be pregnant with Caitlin, I just thought, oh, my baby, I don't want somebody else to have her. I want to yeah. have her myself. So I would say, like, homeschooling started from pregnancy and I would sing to her in my <laughs> belly. And then the thought of giving her up was just weird yeah. to me after that point. But then even it came to kindergarten time and I thought, oh, well, maybe I should send her to school. And I actually went to the kindergarten, public school, kindergarten uh, meeting and had a moment where I thought, no, never mind. I got the sick feeling in my stomach and I just like ran out of there and thought, no way, nobody's going to take my baby. Yeah. <laughs> so that's how it happened for me. But I remember me telling you, oh, I think I'm going to homeschool my my baby. And you were like, oh, no. Right? No, Those no, people no. are crazy. Yeah, they're weird. And I was Those like, homeschoolers. you're calling me crazy, but <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was weird. Yeah. Well, I think, you know, that your experience always shapes what you think about other people. And so I don't think you had met homeschoolers at that time. Well, I that knew... were sort of normal people. Right. I was going to say, I knew <laughs> some homeschoolers, but yes, that's probably the key is that mm-hmm. in my mind, at least they were still a little bit on the odd train. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He used to definitely say like, there's no way I would do that because that's just crazy. And they, it's like the typical, I think, lie of the the enemy that the kids aren't going to be socialized, whatever they mean by that. Right. And um, I think that it's just, it's just not true that the kids won't be socialized because um, we get to the opportunity to bring them up with a variety of ages of people. And I just had this little sweet little lady, Nellie, at church. She was hunched over with her little earbud and she was, or her little, um, what do you call it? What is the thing? Hearing aid? You can't hear. <laughs> yes, a hearing aid. <laughs> and she told me, dear, I had just told her that I homeschooled. We had just met. And she goes, I can't think of a reason why that's not a good thing. Oh. My grandkids are homeschooled. And I think it's just lovely that you do that. And I was like, oh, because some people just go like, oh, okay. And right. I walk away. So it was so encouraging yeah. to have that um, that little voice of you're doing it. Yeah. So, Especially from someone in the older generation, because mm-hmm. oftentimes they still don't understand. You know, we have right. family members who are older and, and they are like, why, why are you doing this again? I remember right. my uncle um, and he's in his seventies and a few years ago is when we early in our homeschool years. And he was so kind about it. He wasn't rude in any way, but he was just like, explain to me why, like, Mm -hmm. why in the world would you do this homeschool thing when that you could send them to school and they could Mm -hmm. get a really great education? He's an attorney. And so he's all about academics. And so for him, it was like, well, you can't possibly give them the academic Mm. model at home. Mm Mm-hmm that they can get in a school. And so, yeah, know, there's he, always the academia lie and right. there's the socialism. Or socialism. socialism. <laughs> That's a lie too, Crystal. <laughs> Socialization lie. Yeah. Yeah. And so where that lady was going with it is she said that her grandkids really talk to her as oh. an older person and she sees them interacting with kids of all ages. And yeah. I see that with my kids. They'll play with younger kids at the park. They'll mm-hmm. interact with the grownups at our family gatherings. And I think that's beautiful. And they're, you know, kids with special needs. They're not afraid because they're not packed into kids only their age all the time. Now, do right. we take classes with kids their age? Yeah, sure. And are we at church and Sunday school sometimes with kids their age? Sure. But it's not it's not going to damage our kids socially right. to keep them home and take us take them with us and they get to see all of life, not just the little bubble of school. Right, right. I yeah. didn't really know that before I started homeschooling, but I've seen it now. Yeah, yeah. So it was fun. We started homeschooling yeah. together and I was terrified. You were not as scared as I was. 
No. Because you had taught. I mean, you like went to college to become a teacher. So, you know, but that <laughs> actually hurt me in yeah. some way. I've heard that remember from teachers. That? Do you remember? Yeah. I struggled. Abby says the same thing. Because I set up my little schedule. I had it, I had it like, remember my spreadsheet? Oh yeah. I would be like, okay, 11, 15, we're going to play Play-Doh right. for 15 <laughs> minutes. And then we're going to get out our letters. And I really was super like hyper scheduled when yeah. Caitlin was little. And I think she lost out on some just mom time and play yeah. time. And that was because I was so teacher regimented and right. had that mindset of school is what's most important. And I think right. over the years, I kind of grew into understanding that relationship yeah. was the benefit that I had kind of overlooked in her younger years, but I'm trying to like catch up now. Yeah. How long do you think it took you to undo that thinking of being in a classroom and kind of transition into what your homeschool looks like today, where it's just kind of normal living mm -hmm. life and academics are part of that, but it's relationships and academics and yeah. life skills and all of that. I think it's so deeply ingrained in me that I, it's a constant battle. Mm -hmm. I don't think that I could say, oh yeah, I've overcome it. But yeah. I think now, you know, like when you know who the enemy is, we know who Satan is, we know he's our enemy. Right. Um, when you know that it's not your children that are your enemy, it's the sin that's in them. Yeah. Well, now that I know that my own propensity to overschedule things mm -hmm. or, and, and, give up some of the relationship for some of the tasks mm -hmm. is my enemy. I just have to constantly be aware of it and pray to the Lord to help me. Yeah. Yeah. I think we all have to battle that. I mean, at least most of the moms I talk to homeschool moms is that we, we still, if, whether we were in the classroom or not, mm -hmm. we battle that because we were raised in the school system. Most of us. Yeah, right. And so we just think, well, we have to have this perfect schedule and it mm -hmm. needs to look like the classroom. And then when it doesn't, we feel like we're mm -hmm. failing and, um, and you're right. I mean, it absolutely is a lie of the enemy that's constantly, constantly. I still am like, how am I 13 and a half years into this? Mm. And I still feel like it's such a struggle all the time. Like I'm doing it wrong. And and that's tough. That That's a hard place mm -hmm. to be um, as a homeschool mom. But I have to remind myself like, okay, <laughs> I'm doing this. You know, the, the Lord is orchestrating our days and I'm mm -hmm. doing my best to submit to him. And so it's going to unfold the way that he wants it to unfold. Yeah. And um, it doesn't need to look like a do you classroom. Have, yeah. Do you have a verse you read like every morning to yourself or you like no. say to yourself every morning do when you? you wake up? Yeah. What is it? Well, there's two. There's may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be pleasing to you, Lord. So I'll, mm -hmm. I'll say that first, like when my eyes are still closed. And then this is the day the Lord has made. I'll rejoice yeah. and be glad in it. So if I, I feel like if I get off thinking those things in the very beginning of the day, reminds me to set my heart on what the Lord has for yeah. the day and to keep in mind the struggles that I, I know are going to be there that are going to be battles for me. Yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yay. <laughs> do you, do you give your kids high fives now every morning? Like you did your students? You like wake up. <laughs> I do not high five Caitlin my kids. Kiers, high five. <laughs> <laughs> that would be really awkward. I, I know. <laughs> no, I'm I give kidding. Pierce a hug. <laughs> And usually, actually, he'll jump out and scare me. That's his morning really? mommy greeting. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah. He <laughs> hides and he knows I'll be like stumbling around. And if I'm up later than he is, then he'll jump out and scare me. That's funny. It's his tradition. Yeah. And then um, he's a middle school boy. He's 13. Yeah. yeah. He's so fun. <laughs> and then Caitlin's usually, you know, she's a teen girl. So she's yeah. still getting up. So I quietly go in and I sing my good morning song to them. I sing I that do. to the girls this morning. Do and Katie said, my mom sings that <laughs> to me in the morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's time to rise and shine. <laughs> well, I have a quiet one too. You have a quiet one? Yeah. Aww. Good morning, God. This is your day. I am your child. Show me your way. <laughs> never you heard you that sing one? that. No. Uh, the kids are like, oh, it's kind of creepy. <laughs> That's so funny. Oh my word. They'll love it someday, but not I'm now. Sure. <laughs> and you know what? They think we're dorks, but they're going to be singing to their babies one day too. Yeah. And when their kids are teenagers, they're still going to sing to them because mm -hmm. that's what mommies do. <laughs> so let's take a break. We'll be right back. We want to thank all of our sponsors for making this show possible. BJU Press Homeschool, CTC Math, Apologia, and Summit Ministries. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do this. Visit the show notes for links to these great companies and thank them for supporting the Schoolhouse Rocked podcast. We are back with Crystal. Um, I want to talk about friendship for a few minutes because sure. the, this is you and I. So we've been friends for over 20 years. Mm -hmm. We were trying to figure out like, I don't even know the year that we became friends, but it was a few years before our girls were born. Probably 2001. Yeah. 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 That's I think 22 right. years we've yeah. been friends. Yeah. 
long time. I'm the math teacher. I know these things. Right. I believe you. <laughs> and we met at church and I remember we were part of this um, family matters class. It's what it was mm-hmm. called. It was a Sunday school class. And we were the only two couples who didn't have kids yeah. in this family class. So everyone else had kids. And the, I mean, like the moment we met, we just connected. And um, one of the things I, I love about you, I'm going to embarrass you a little bit, Uh-oh. but I, I say this for a reason, because the thing that I love most about you and and why I love being your bestie for the resty, your mm. BFTR, is because <laughs> you encourage me so much spiritually mm. um, in my walk with the Lord. And so like all the, I mean, so for our whole friendship, you always will ask me like, what are you reading in God's word right now? What mm. is the Lord teaching you? How are you growing? But we talk about other things too. We talk about marriage and we talk about parenting. We talk about the world and culture and everything and the pressures of life and how we're dealing with all of these things. And so I so much appreciate that about you and you just exude the love of Jesus, like to everyone mm-hmm. around you. And oh. I know that if others <laughs> were here who who you're friends with, they would say the same thing. Mm-hmm. Um, where I, 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 I'm trying to think of a good way to ask this because I'm like, where did you learn to do that, Crystal? <laughs> did you go to a friendship school? <laughs> Actually, I did. I'll tell you, you can call 1-800-F-R-I-E-N-D and get that. <laughs> We should start that. <laughs> we should. Yeah. Friendship school. You want to learn how to be a good friend? Call Crystal Coleman. <laughs> she will teach you how to be a good friend. Uh, um, but really, I see that in Katie, your daughter as well, mm-hmm. who is my daughter's best friend. They they had no choice. They have been best friends <laughs> since birth. Yes, that's true. And um, I'll, I'm going to tell the funny I'm glad story. It worked about, out and they like each other. <laughs> yeah. So this is a funny story about Katie's when Katie was born. So if you saw Katie now, she is a tall, beautiful blonde and when she was born, she <laughs> had jet black hair mm-hmm. that like stuck up. She looked like, I mean, you have brown hair. Yeah. She would have been more apt to have been your daughter yes, than mine. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. She looked Hispanic <laughs> or something. And yeah. And so Brooke, like, I mean, we totally could have swapped kids and people would have believed yes. that Brooklyn was yours and Katie was mine. For sure. Because Brooklyn had blonde hair. Yeah. And Katie had black <laughs> hair. It was hilarious. Um, anyway, so our girls have been best friends uh, since the day they were born. And, um, I love just seeing that you have instilled that in Caitlin as well. And she is such a, she is that friend to Brooklyn. Um, and you know, she came to surprise Brooklyn for her 18th oh, birthday. That's so why you guys fun. are here. Oh my goodness. <laughs> you guys, it was so much fun. Brooklyn had no idea. Yeah. Um, and so, so and that's one of the things I love about you is you are so adventurous and oh. fun and you are creative and always have a new idea. Oh, yeah. New yeah. You call me the idea girl. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> You're my idea friend. <laughs> Yeah. And playful, and you always love to go do things, yeah. and you're always my my fun idea friend for sure. Yeah, if yeah. I want to go do something fun, I'll be like, "Get Yeah, okay, what are we doing? <laughs> I'm trying to get her and her family to move to Oklahoma. But yeah, they, they, they live by the beach right now. Darn it! And ah, uh, North County, San Diego is pretty nice. <laughs> it's really hard to pull people away from that ocean. Yeah. But so what I was going to ask is, as you've been raising Caitlin to to just be a woman of God, how have you instilled in her? what it looks like to be a good friend. And uh, much of it I know is just your example that you have been, but how have you worked with her through the years and teaching her how to be a godly friend, friend? how to be a good friend to to people? I don't know that I intentionally did anything. I think it's all the Lord. It's Mm. just always driving her to Jesus, who is the good shepherd, who is our savior, who loves us unconditionally And so when we have Christ as the center of our hearts, that's the natural overflow of our heart Mm -hmm. is caring about others. When we learn to be selfless instead of self-centered, then um, friendship flows from that. And that's only a work that the Lord can do in our hearts. So yeah, yeah, I think just driving her to Jesus and the way that I encouraged that was just drip system day by day. Yeah. Let's read. When they were little, we had the picture Bible and I would read them the picture Bible stories every day. And we would act out the stories with our laundry basket. We'd have baby Moses, <laughs> you know, or um, just doing various yeah. things with scripture, memorizing scripture, singing scripture, talking about the Lord, you know, like what the Bible says, when yeah. you rise up, when you walk along, along the road and when you lie down, just always... Um, drawing out that I remember sitting at stoplights going, how could I talk about the Lord right now? Look Mm. at the beautiful flower God made or, you know, just various things that we can always be doing to direct the kids to the Lord, not in a 
forced way, sure, but just in a way that he naturally reveals himself to us through general revelation, through scripture, and through the kindness of people acknowledging the kindness that other people um, show to us. Yeah. I think that's how. That's a fun yeah. question. I never yeah. even thought about that. So it's just intentional parenting. It's it's pointing mm-hmm. them to Jesus. It's mm-hmm. finding ways and opportunities to show the love of God to them and to others. And mm-hmm. so, yeah, it's it's leading by example is what it is. And mm-hmm. uh, you're good at that. So anyway, we're out of time. What? I know. That went so fast. I know. <laughs> Time flies when you're having fun, sister. Okay. We are absolutely out of time, but we're going to come back on Wednesday. We've got lots more to talk about, including we're going to do some trivia, some Yvette trivia. I'm we're going to so see excited. how well Crystal really knows oh, me. Oh, no, I'm a little nervous about that. Right. <laughs> I'll feed you the answers under the table. I know so you then, like Lucky Charms. Hey, don't say that yet because that I'm, might be one of the I'm questions. I'm going to have the answers before you have the questions, though. Right. <laughs> Do you want to just give me the questions? Sure. So then you'll know all the answers. Yeah. <laughs> we'll maybe talk about that. Maybe episode three. We'll see. But but we will be back with Crystal, the regular homeschool mom. <gasps> That's what you could be. You could like have your own podcast. Just called the regular homeschool just mom? Just called the regular homeschool mom. But what or about 1-800-FRIEND? That too. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to start a whole... See, I'm the idea school. We're going to start a whole new business, Mm -hmm. a friendship revolution and a homeschool mom revolution called the regular homeschool mom, because that's what we are. We are regular homeschool mom. (laughs) (laughs) Anyway, we will be back on Wednesday. Um, Thank you guys so much for being with us. Make sure you stay tuned to the end of the show to hear a clip of what's coming on Wednesday. Maybe you'll even hear a clip of one of our trivia questions. I don't know. Probably not. But we'll see. I don't know. Stay tuned to listen to whatever the clip is. Um, <laughs> and thank you guys so much again for listening. We love you. Have a great rest of your day, and we'll see you back here then. Bye. Education is discipleship, and this is something I didn't understand until I was probably three years into homeschooling. The Bible teaches us in Luke 640 that when a student is fully trained, he will be like his teacher. And as we look around the culture right now, Uh, I think it begs the question, who is teaching our children? Who is teaching our children and what are they teaching our children? And to me, the benefit, the primary benefit of having my children home with me is I am able to impart my worldview to my children. I think it's a good day when I have a checklist, but I don't always, a lot of times it's a mental checklist. And a lot of times for me, it's more routine, like sure. a routine through the week. And homeschooling has definitely taught me flexibility in, with myself and with my schedule. Yeah. Whereas when I was a regimented teacher, I mean, it was just up and you live by the bell and you do the same thing every day. Whereas homeschooling, because you're tending to the hearts of your children, flexibility is mm-hmm. definitely something that you grow in. I, I have grown in flexibility and um, it's allowed me to have those, to seize the opportunities to reach my kids' hearts because I've slowly been trained by the Lord and by homeschooling to not have myself as regimented as I want to be and not, if I don't get all the things done, it's okay. Yeah. Because we're tending to the things that are always most important. So keeping that as priority, if that's, the, if that's the one thing I do all day is I read my Bible and I share the Lord with my kids mm-hmm. in some fashion that reaches their heart. Right. Done. That was a good day homeschooling. <laughs>